so in this tutorial we are going to study about selectors and descriptors in detail so we have already covered protected mode memory addressing in the previous tutorial we have briefly discussed what exactly is protected memory so in the protected mode we know that a microprocessor in the segment register we do not have the segment address we have selectors and what selectors does is it selects one of the so we have two cross eight one nine two descriptors so these are the amount of descriptors we have and what the selector do it selects it selects one of a descriptor from this range so the selector is actually inside our segment register so if this is my segment register then there is a selector inside it and that selector will point to a descriptor and basically descriptors are stored in a descriptor table so now we are going to briefly discuss what exactly is a descriptor and you can see we have some three structures here which are of different microprocessors this is of 80286 and we have 80386 till pentium 4 and then 64 bit core 2 and pentium 4 processors so we are going to discuss the descriptors in each of these cases because with advancement in processors there is also an advancement in the descriptor so now what a descriptor does what a descriptor does it has a descriptor has three important things first is the location second is the length of the segment and third one is the access rights now in this tutorial we are going to discuss two important things inside a descriptor which is length and the location and since access rights is going to be a separate tutorial we will discuss it in the next tutorial so in descriptors we have two different types of descriptors one is the global descriptors global descriptors and one is the local descriptors so why do we have two different types of descriptors the reason is that local descriptors are for specific applications so let's suppose you have an application uh, let's say google chrome is an application on your computer so there is a descriptor which is local to that application to google chrome so only google chrome will be able to access that descriptor and then it can try to access the memory to execute the programs etc global descriptors are for system so if there are some uh, procedures or executions of the programs done by some system applications so we use global descriptors so sometimes global descriptors are also known as system descriptors and local descriptors are also known as application descriptors so global descriptors applies to all programs so it applies to all programs all programs so this is uh, just basic uh, two important things that we have discussed which is two different type of descriptor now we are going to discuss the location and the length so to specify the location we have 
uh, we actually want to specify the starting location. So if you take a look at these structures, you can see we have some base address here. So base address is used. So base address is used to specify the starting location of the memory segment. So we have base address and it specifies starting location. of memory segment that we are trying to address right so let's uh, study some uh, important features of the base address now if we have a microprocessor if we take a look at the microprocessor 80286 you can see here the descriptor is here so in the 80286 microprocessor, the base address, the base address is of 24 bit length, 24 bit length. And since it is of 24 bits, this means that the microprocessor can access any segment at any location, at any location. within 16 megabytes of memory 16 megabytes of memory now in case of 80386 processors intel family of processors we have the base address of 32 bit and this means the segment can be addressed at any 4 gigabytes of memory so you can see and observe that as we are evolving as the processors are evolving the base address is also becoming large and hence the microprocessor will be able to address a lot higher amount of memory which is 4 gigabytes of memory all right so this is about the base address so now we have covered the starting location you can see in these descriptors we have base address which is used to specify the starting location of the memory and we have studied it for specific cases now next thing is length so how do we specify the length of a memory segment now the answer is the segment limit the answer is the segment limit now you can see in these we have segment limit limit is here so what does a limit contains right so the limit contains the last offset address and we know that the offset address are basically used to address particular instructions in a particular segment right so it contains the last offset address that means uh, it will contain the address that points to the last instruction inside the memory segment so it contains the last offset address in a segment all right so again we are going to study limit for different uh, for these different types of processor because limit is also going to change for 80286 and 80386 right so for 80286 the limit is of 16 bit so it is of a 16 bit limit so let's suppose you want to access a particular instruction what you do is you will add the base and the limit and you will be able to access that right so in case of 80286 you have a 16 bit limit in case of 80386 we have a 20 bit limit 
we have a 20 bit limit. So this means since 80286 is a 16 uh, bit processor, it can access up to 1 to 64 kilobytes. And 80386 can access 1 megabyte. or 4 kilobyte and 4 gigabyte in length. So now we have a knowledge of descriptors that how the location and the address or the length is specified using the base and the limit and we have seen for particular cases of 80286 and 80386. Now there are some important bits that you can observe in this microprocessor and this microprocessor which is 80386 till P4. P4 means Pentium 4. So from 80386 until microprocessors till Pentium 4 you can observe that we have some bits here G bit, D bit, AV bit. And similarly, in core 2 and 64 bit Pentium 4 processors, we also have these limits, these bits. So, these bits have some uses. We are going to quickly take a look at what are the uses of these bits and what these actually specify. So, the G bit, let me change the color. So, the G bit is also known as the granularity bit granularity bit right so in short form we write g bit so if the value of this bit you you know if this is a bit it can have a value 0 or 1 only so if the value of this bit is set to 0 this means if g is 0 then it specifies that the limit has a length of that limit has a length of 20 bit this is what it specifies and if the value of g is equals to 1 then this limit right 20 bit limit means now this limit specifies the segment limit of 20 bit so i can write it as f f f f h right so 5 times f means 5 into 4 20 bits so this is a 20 bit segment limit so if g is 0 we have a limit which looks something like this now if g is equals to 1 we will append this limit with append or sometimes we also say that we are going to multiply multiply it by triple fh right so 3 4 5 we have 5f here if we will multiply it by this or we will append 3f then we will get total 8f right so Appending it by FFH means that we are multiplying it by 4k bytes. Multiply by 4k bytes. So, this is what happens when g is equals to 1. We just append this limit. So, this means that we are actually trying to increase the limit to 8, right? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Alright, so next bit is the D bit. So D bit. Now D bit specifies the instructions, whether the instructions are of 16 bit or 32 bit, right? So if D is equals to 0, then it specifies the microprocessor that the instructions are 16 bit compatible with since it is 16 bit it is compatible with 8086 till 8086 till 80286 right 
what happens if d is equals to 1 then it specifies the microprocessor that the instructions are of 32 bit so the microprocessor will assume that all the registers and all the instructions and all the offset are 32 bits so it will automatically select the 32 bit registers the next bit is the av bit right we have a av bit and it is an important bit because it specifies whether the segment is available or not so let's suppose there is a program which is trying to access a particular segment and there is another program that tries to access it so what we can do is we can actually the microprocessor will set this av bit to zero it will set av bit as zero which means that the segment is not available segment not available right simple and straightforward so av equals to one we have segment as available so now the program can actually try to access the segment so this is just a, a knowledge uh, or you can say the structure of the descriptors and selectors here in the next video we are going to discuss brief briefly about the access rights byte now this byte since it has it will be having eight bits one two three four five six seven right so eight bits so this access right bytes have eight bits and each of this bit has some name assigned to it we will discuss what are the uses of that and we will cover the access rights byte which is really very important so that's all for this tutorial if you have understood the concept well please make sure to like the video and subscribe our channel thanks for watching